folks, how are you? Hello, Toledo. Good to see you all. Please excuse my back, I apologize. Let me. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to tell you, let's start off by congratulating Marcy Captor for two more years. And Shelly, when the Secret Service used to let me drive, they don't let presidents or vice presidents drive. When you used to drive, I drove those Jeeps you built. My daughter still drives a Jeep. And Marcy, if uh, I wish my dad had owned a dealership, he didn't. He managed it. If he owned it, I would have been able to own those new cars I took my, I took my girlfriends to the prom in. Instead, I had to borrow them, but I still got them. It's good having a dad in the automobile business, man. Hey, I'm back, you're back, and the industry's back. The president and I made a bet, a simple bet. We bet on you. We bet on in American ingenuity. We bet on you, and we won. Chrysler, fastest growing car company in America. General Motors has seen the largest profits in its history. 200,000 auto jobs lost since the rescue plan. 400,000 lost before we took office. 200,000 new jobs since the rescue plan was in place. That's 200,000 people who had their dignity returned to them, reinstated, and a paycheck they can raise their family on. My dad knew something and taught us that all of you know, that a job is about a lot more than a paycheck. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about your place in the community. It's about being able to turn to your kids and say it's going to be OK. That's what a job's about. I don't know these other guys understand that. And folks, that's how Barack and I measure economic success. Whether the middle class is growing or not, that's the measure of success. A growing, vibrant middle class where moms and dads, mothers and fathers can look at their kids and say, honey, it's going to be okay. Look, that's what I want to talk to you about today. This is the first of four speeches I'll be making on behalf of the president and me in the coming weeks, laying out what we believe are clear, stark differences between us and our opponents, and what's at stake for the middle class, because it is the middle class that's at stake in this election. Mitt Romney, Rick Santorum, and Newt Gingrich, these guys have a fundamentally different economic philosophy than we do. Our philosophy, ours is one that values the workers in the success of a business. It values the middle class in the success of our economy. Simply stated, we're about promoting the private sector. They're about protecting the privileged sector. We are for a fair shot and a fair shake. They're about no rules, no risks, and no accountability. Look, there's no clear example of these two different views of the economy and how we, we reacted. Yeah. Yeah. The crisis in the automobile industry. Yeah. It's sort of a cautionary tale of how they would run the government again and the economy again and give it a chance. Remember, and you do remember, and Shelley, you captured it all. Remember what the headlines were saying when you woke up a couple years ago. Quote, it's bankruptcy time for GM. Another headline, crunch time looms for Chrysler. Another headline, the government might, must ask, act quickly to prevent the collapse of suppliers. You guys know, for every one of you on the line, there's four people in another job to find those parts. That's right. Folks, a million jobs at stake, a million good jobs are at stake. On the assembly line, at the parts factories, at the automobile dealerships, right down to the diners outside each of those facilities. 
Our friends on the other side, our Republican friends, had started a mantra. They started the mantra that said, we would make auto companies, quote, wards of the state, was their phrase. Governor Romney was more direct. Let Detroit go bankrupt. He said that. He said that what we propose, and I quote, is even worse than bankruptcy, end of quote. He said it would make GM, quote, the living dead. Newt Gingrich said, quote, a mistake. The guy I work with every day, the president, he didn't flinch. This is a man with steel in his spine. He knew that, he knew that resurrecting the industry wasn't going to be popular. It was absolutely clear in every bit of polling data. And he knew he was taking a chance. But he believed. He wasn't going to give up on a million jobs in the iconic industry America invented. At least he wasn't going to give it up without a real fight. That's right. That's the kind of president, in my view, we all want. A president yeah. with the courage of his convictions. A president willing to take risks on behalf of American workers and the American people. And folks, that's exactly what we have. A president with the courage of his convictions. He made the tough call, and the verdict is in. President Obama was right, and they were dead wrong. And I say, I say to Governor Romney, his prediction, Governor Romney's prediction of a living dead, we have now living proof a million jobs saved, 200,000 new jobs created, the Toledo powertrain plant adding 250 good paying jobs over the next two years, GM investing $200 million to build an efficient eight speed transmission that the world will see, Toledo Chrysler Assembly Complex preparing to bring on a new ship, 1,100 new jobs, building the best cars in the world. Jeeps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Building Jeeps not only to sell in the United States, but to export abroad. Yeah. All told, right here in Ohio, just since reorganization, 15,000 good paying union auto worker jobs, jobs you can raise a family on, yeah. live in a decent neighborhood on. cars that are once again cars we want to drive and the world wants to buy. And one more thing, the President's historic fuel economy efficiency standards that nearly double the efficiency of cars, saving the American families $1.7 trillion at the pump, helping free us from foreign oil dependence. And they were against that too. You know, even though the verdict is in, Marcy, our Republican opponents, they just won't give up. They can't deny the automobile industry is back. They can't deny we're creating good jobs, good paying jobs again. So now they're trotting out a new argument. It's kind of old and new. They say not only should we not have done it, but had we not done it, private sector would have done it. They say, they say the private markets would have stepped in to save the industry. Governor Romney says the market, Wall Street, quote, will help lift them out. Wrong. Any honest expert will tell you in 2009, no one was lining up to lend General Motors or Chrysler any money, or for that matter, to lend money to anybody. That includes Bain Capital. They weren't lining up to lend anybody any money. So now that argument doesn't have legs. They've now gone another one. 
new argument. They argued that our plan to save the industry was just a giveaway to union bosses in the unions. Yeah. Senator, Senator Santorum said it was, and I quote, a payoff to special interest, end of quote. That's right. Working people. You know, it's kind of amazing. Gingrich and Romney and Santorum, they don't let the facts get in their way. <laughs> Nobody knows better than you and your families the real price you pay to allow this reorganization to take place. Plant closures, wage freezes, lower wages. They know, everybody knows, these companies would not be in existence today without the sacrifices of all of you and the UAW. again. Yeah. Look, the President and I have a fundamental commitment to dealing the middle class back into the American economy that they've been dealt out of for so long. And ultimately, that's what this election is all about. It's a choice, a clear choice, a choice between a system that's rigged and a system that's fair, a system that says everyone will be held accountable for their actions, not just the middle class. A system that trusts the workers on the line instead of listening to the folks up in the suites. Right. Right. Folks, that's the choice. It's a stark choice. And in my mind, it's not even a close call. Look, a lot of you and your friends and family understand what I understand. As a kid, I saw my dad trapped in the city where all the good jobs were gone after the World War II, in the early 50s, mid-50s. I remember him walking up to my bedroom in my grandpa's house and saying, Joey, uh, dad's going to have to move away for a year. I'm going to move to Wilmington, Delaware. Uncle Frank's down there. It's only 156 miles away. I'll try to come home every weekend. Joey, there are good jobs down there. And when I get one and I'm settled, I'm going to bring you, Mom, Val, and Jimmy it's going to be good. A lot of you, a lot of you and a lot of your friends made that long walk to your kid's bedroom. But because of the actions of the president, things are changing. Today, hundreds of thousands of workers are replacing the longest walks with a different journey. It's a journey that ends with workers who are able to go home and say, i got a job. I'm building cars again. These are amazing cars that people in America all over the world are going to want to buy. It's not just the automobile industry is coming back, folks. Manufacturing is coming back. The middle class is coming back. Yeah. America is coming back. <laughs> worker. Worker by worker. Home by home. Community by community. This country is coming back because of you. God bless you all and may God protect our troops. Go fill those cards!